The Master Liquid ML360R RGB is a new all-in-one by Cooler Master that sports a 360mm radiator, addressable RGB fans, and a low-profile dual-chamber pump. The nicely sleeved FEP tubing has a premium feel, and you can use the included RGB control unit to customize the addressable LEDs on the fans and pump, or plug directly into your motherboard. For more on the Master Liquid ML360R RGB, click the sponsor link in the video's description. Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. This is my monthly builds video for November 2018. Every month I part out a couple PCs, so what we're looking at today are parts lists. I'm not actually building anything, so if you guys want to see a computer put together, feel free to check out my builds list because I have lots of actual PC builds there. Today is more about choosing the parts before you build a PC, so if you're building for the first time or if you're just not quite sure what you should put together, I do get feedback every month. So last month I asked people what PC builds they wanted to see this month in November. Uh, so we have a Black Friday deals PC. It's a little too early for Black Friday, although there are some deals coming up, but I did do a $750 build for you. Uh, and then I tried to do a $1,000 build, but it came out more than that. What I'm actually going to be building in my follow-up video to this is going to be something akin to the $1,000 build. And then I have a $1,400 version that's a little bit more high-end. I did note that there was next to zero interest in the really high core count Unlock Xeons or Skylake Xs, so we are going to skip those and we're sticking with mainstream AMD builds. In the meantime, I will be doing this again next month in December, so feel free to click the straw poll link in the description and vote on that so you can give me your feedbacks. So let's jump right into the first build, the $750 build, or as close to that as I could get it. Honestly, this was $750 yesterday. Now it has crept up in price a little bit to $762. But what we have here is a balanced PC and a PC that honestly I could say if someone came to me and said, I have $750 to spend, I want a gaming PC, this is probably what I would tell them to get. It's based around a six core AMD Ryzen 2 processor, so the 2000 series is a little bit faster. They're based on the 12 nanometer manufacturing process instead of 14, so it's a nice little step up. It's only 160 bucks too, and you get six cores and 12 threads. Intel has nothing near the, com the performance of the CPU at this price range. I've paired it with an air cooler here, the Hyper 212 Black, which is only $35, although you could easily save that $35 and get away with the air cooler that's included with this processor. The motherboard I've chosen is a B450 Tomahawk, and I've already got this right here because I will be building this system. I chose this largely based on uh, Steve from Hardware Unboxed's recommendation uh, because he tested a bunch of B450 motherboards and looked at their power delivery as well as features. Power delivery can be limited on B450 450 motherboards, especially the less expensive ones, but the Tomahawk actually has a pretty good configuration for that. Beyond that, we have a 16 gig memory kit, not an 8 gig kit, so I was happy that I was able to include that. It's still 135 bucks, but this kit should work just fine with Ryzen. A 240 gig SSD, so you will want to add some more storage to this in the future, or hopefully soon, maybe if you have an old hard drive lying around. An RX 570 8 gig graphics card, a $47 Cooler Master Master Box case, 550 watt power supply from Corsair. This is a basic one, but it's got all black cabling. And then a couple Corsair ML fans. These are maglev fans, so they're nice fans. Add these to the case, which only ships with one case fan and you will have a much better cooling situation. So here's a CPU available from a wide variety of re retailers. So this isn't just like some quick like sale price. It's always 160. You'll probably be able to get the 2600, I'm guessing, if sales this year are anything like last year for even less than this. So keep an eye on the 2600. It's already a good price at 160 bucks, but I imagine you might even be able to find it cheaper. This is the Hyper 212 Black from Cooler Master, and the Hyper 212 is a very popular cooler. I am glad they decided to make it in all black, because often when we see the Hyper 212, we complain that like, wow, it's a good cooler, but it doesn't look that great. This one's just all black and clean, and it isn't even that much more expensive, 35 bucks. Again, you can go with Without this if you want to save a few dollars, but this will run cooler and quieter than the stock heatsink fan. Motherboard is the MSI B450 Tomahawk. I already mentioned why I chose this, but it's only about a hundred bucks. I don't have good pictures right here, but oh, there's a better one. I already explained why I chose this one, but uh, here's a quick closer look at the picture of it at least. It has all the basic features for a system that you'd want to put together. It's missing some of the higher-end motherboard features, and the one main thing it's going to be missing for the system I put together is a USB 3.1 Gen 2 front panel port, but that's because I'm going with a weird configuration with the case I chose, but more on that in just a minute. Memory kit is, again, the G-Skill Ripjaws 5. It's just a standard all-black kit, which does work with Ryzen, so you should be able to plug in XMP values and run this at DDR4 3200 speed. 
SSD is a 240 gig Toshiba, uh, although you can spend just about 20 bucks more to get yourself a 500 gig SSD. Again, more on that in just a minute. But if you are on a budget, 40 bucks for a 240 gig main operating system drive will get you uh, up and running. But again, I recommend keeping an eye out for additional storage because you'll fill that 240 gigs pretty fast. If you have an old hard drive from an old computer that you can repurpose or just spend another 40 or 50 bucks on another one or two terabyte spinning mechanical hard drive. For graphics card, the RX 570 eight gig version, only $170. This is uh, quite a bit cheaper than the RX 580, although if you can afford an RX 580, it is a, a decent little step up in performance from this, but um, look how much these prices have come down <laughs> compared to what they were just a few months ago. But uh, the good news is that that's available and in stock and not too expensive. Finally, a case, uh, we got the master box. This is a solid all around case. It's got a good airflow. It's got a nice layout. It's got a shrouded power supply area at the bottom and it's only 4650 for Newegg with a $10 promotional gift card. That's a good deal. Uh, power supply, I actually had a different power supply chosen, um, but I again was trying to keep this under budget. Bear in mind, if you're gonna spend $50 on an 80 plus bronze 550 watt power supply, you can spend 10 or $15 more for an 80 plus gold power supply and even 650 watt version. So keep a close eye on the power supply ranges. I feel like this power supply you should be able to get for about 40 bucks. And when it comes to efficiency ratings, power supplies, you will pay more in the long term with a bronze rated power supply than a gold rated power supply, just because it's going to waste more energy via waste heat. And uh, that, for that reason, a gold rated power supply might be something that you're interested in. Finally, I did add fans because the case only comes with a single fan. You definitely wanted to add some more And the ML series is a very nice one. These have no lights or anything like that. And you get two of them for $27. You can get cheaper fans in this too, but uh, these are just ones that I'd recommend. So there you have it, a about $750, actually more like $765 right now if you include the mail-in rebates, and a very good system, a very powerful gaming system, but you can go up from there. So what I have is a system that's like the high-end version of the $750 system, and actually cranked up the price pretty quickly. So this is about a $1,450 system with a bunch of upgrades, and of course, you could swap in some of these upgrades or none of them or all of them, depending on how much money you wanted to save. I do want to point out that a big reason why the price is pretty high is because the case I'm building with is the Cooler Master SL600M, and that's a $200 case. I am building in this case because I have it here and I wanted to try it out and give you guys an idea of what the case is like, but you can save probably about a hundred bucks and get away with a much less expensive case. You could also save money by not going with an all-in-one liquid cooler, but based on the Gamers Nexus reviews of the Mastercase SL600M yesterday, which has very good cooling for the graphics card because it draws air in from the bottom, CPU cooling was not so good and they used an uh, air cooler, a standard air cooler for that. But if you had a liquid cooler at the top, it would go along with the airflow and I'm imagining it would work a little bit better. So for that reason, I've paired this up. That is why the price is a little bit more, but of course you can mix and match, swap things in and out between these two system builds and you'd still end up with a powerful system, just depending on whether you wanted the eight core processor with the 2700 versus the six core version from before. I upgraded the motherboard specifically to have better power delivery for overclocking, but also to be compatible with the front panel USB 3.1 Gen 2 type C port that is on the case. I feel bad having a case that has that without actually pairing it up with the motherboard that has the same. I did upgrade the SSD, but that was only about 15 bucks more again, $17 more for a 480 gig version. And then we have a Vega 56, which I also have right here and I already bought, anticipating doing a comparison between this build, which is much less expensive, and the super high-end 3,000-ish dollar build that I did last month. And a Vega 56 for $400 is actually somewhat reasonably priced. Of course, after I bought this, like I, I literally just bought it with my own funds uh, for $400 and two days later, like a day and a half ago, the price has increased by $75. So for that reason, I used a parametric filter on this parts list to pair you up with a Vega 56, but it's not the same one I'm using. For $405 right now, you can still get the ASRock blower version of the Vega 56, which probably wouldn't do quite as well as this one, uh, but and it's in keeping with the price and I, it's hard to deal with price fluctuations sometimes. Also worth noting that you do get a three game bundle right now. The games are Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Strange Brigade, and Star Control Origins. So if you're interested in those games, then that's maybe an additional value too. But if you're not, then that doesn't matter. But you'd have some free games to hand off to friends or something like that. Back to the rest of the parts though, we have a Ryzen 7 2700, which you can get for about 40 or 50 bucks less than the 2700X, 
overclock this and it's basically the same as the 2700X, which you should be able to do with an aftermarket cooler, 264. Also worth noting again that this is 100 bucks more than the six core version. So if you don't need the two extra cores, just use the six core version. If all you're worried about is gaming or maybe some gaming and streaming, the six core version will still do you just fine. Again, I'm using a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler for this. It's $120. It's a solid all-in-one liquid cooler with addressable RGBs, but it does cost a bit more than an air cooler, so if you wanted to save money, then consider that. Uh, ASRock X470 Tai Chi, I again mainly chose because of this little port right here, uh, the USB 3.1 Gen 2, but it's also got uh, good power delivery, so if you wanted an upgrade over the uh, B450 motherboard that I chose, then this would be a suitable one for this rig. Uh, use the same memory kit, so nothing to mention there. Uh, I did want to quickly talk about storage. I'm looking at SSDs with this breakdown between the 250 gig and the 500 gig range. If you sort them by price per gigabyte, you'll find the best deals right now are on 500 gig class SSDs. First 240 gig one that comes in here for $36.44 is this ad link one. Um, but just uh, again, something to point out that you should reality check uh, these prices because you might find a better deal on an SSD that has higher capacity and a 500 gig SSD is a, is a really nice thing to start out with. Uh, there's the graphics card again, we already mentioned that. There's the graphics card I'm actually using. I wish the price didn't jump up so much, that sucks, but we gotta deal with it. Here's the case, the SL600M, which I didn't realize was a $200 case. Uh, I have not built with this case yet, but initial reviews that I've seen that came out yesterday were pretty positive. Again, 200 bucks, so you gotta take that into consideration. You could get by with a much less expensive case, but I'm gonna build in this case and try it out, so I'll let you guys know what I think. And finally, a power supply. This is a 650 watt, 80 plus gold certified, rather than the 550 watt, 80 plus bronze uh, rated power supply used in the first build. But again, look at the price here. We're only talking $66 versus the $50 price of the first one. So if you want a little bit more power and you want a little bit more efficiency, definitely worth the 15 bucks or so that you can uh, upgrade to this one. And again, easily swap this in to that first build if you wanted to. Finally though, my entire intent here was to try to do an A to B comparison. Last month, I built the fastest PC you can build with a 9900K, which costs over $500, and an RTX 2080 Ti, which costs 1200 bucks if you can even find them in stock right now. What I wanted to build was a bang for the buck PC on the AMD platform with Ryzen and with a Vega 56, assuming the prices stay reasonable, and then show an, a comparison between the two PCs and their performance, because I think the amount of extra performance you get spending $3,000 or so on that super high-end PC versus what you get spending say 750 or even $1,400 on the PCs I'm looking at today is not gonna be all that much, especially depending on the monitor that you pair it with. And that is the final part for today's video is pairing this stuff up with the monitor. The monitors I like right now are 2560 by 1440, high refresh rate monitors that also have variable refresh rate technology. That means FreeSync on the AMD side or G-Sync on the Nvidia side. The reason I like this resolution and those technologies is because you don't need to spend an exorbitant amount of money on a graphics card in order to push, say, a 4K resolution. 1440 is also a step up from console resolution, which for the most part is 1080. Yes, there are games that play at 4K, but they're capped at 30 hertz. So going for the higher resolution, higher refresh rate, and then the variable refresh rate all ties into those things that make PC gaming special and something that you can be like, yes, that's, that's why I spent this extra money on that is for these features. But, do you need to spend the amount of money that I spent on the system last month, or can you get by with something like this? To that end, here are a couple monitors because I'm gonna take the entire cost into consideration, not just the price of the computer itself, but the monitor price too. And when you're talking FreeSync, you can get some much better deals than you can with G-Sync. Unfortunately, for 2560 by 1440, I didn't find as many good deals as I was hoping for, but this is actually a 31.5 inch AOC monitor for $280. It's a FreeSync monitor, but it's also IPS, and it's got uh, 1.07 billion colors, so it's at least got 10-bit uh, color representation. So if you want an inexpensive monitor that's larger, that's 2560 by 1440 and FreeSync, up to 75 hertz, this is a solid choice for you. This would be a little bit better as a dual purpose monitor for gaming and also content creation or something like that. If you wanted strictly a gaming monitor, then I will point you towards this Acer, which I found the best prices on, as well as having this feature set. It's a 27 inch, 2560 by 1440. This one goes up to 144 hertz, 
So much higher refresh rate, combine that with FreeSync and you're gonna have a very nice smooth gaming experience. And this is available for $356, $355. The cheapest G-Sync's 2560x1440, 27-inch monitors you can find are all around $500 and up. So that's a decent uh, savings when you compare the FreeSync monitors to the G-Sync monitor. And I'll also be comparing gameplay between the two once I get this system all built and put together. But that is coming in a future video. That is all the time I have for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. And I have links to all the parts I've discussed today in the description down below, as well as links to PC Part Picker. Part Packer. As well as links to PC Part Picker, as well as links to my store where you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and lots of other cool merchandise. Thank you guys so much for watching though, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.